be proud of who you are, where you come from, and what you're doing each and every day of the year. A seed of empowerment has been planted on them, and this seed encourages them to pursue their dreams and make a difference. Hello and welcome to Qatar 365. I'm Laila Humaira, and this is the first of two special episodes where we honor the inspiring women of Qatar, each blazing the trail in their own field, breaking barriers, and inspiring others to achieve their version of success. But first, we meet someone who's making a splash in the world of science, and another who's at the forefront of Qatar's digital revolution. Science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Together, they make up STEM, a giant network of industries that quite literally makes the world go round. For years, it's also been known to be a male-dominated field. But Qatar is among many countries determined to change that by diversifying its STEM workforce. Those efforts start here, at the Ministry of Communications and Information Technology, the place powering up Qatar's digital transformation. And leading the charge is Iman al Kuari. My role as the Director of Digital Innovation is about spearheading the Smart Country program where we're actually digitally transforming different sectors and seeing where technology makes sense to improve the quality of life. From real-time crowd and traffic management to food security analytics, the high-tech solutions from the Ministry's Digital Transformation program, TASMU Smart Qatar, stems from its Innovation Lab. We try to bring the different backgrounds, the people who are looking into the future, who are the researchers from academic fields and research institutions, but also bringing the people from the industry with the people from the different sectors that are looking to see how they can apply this technology. Iman's commitment to creating a diverse working environment starts from the youth. She helped develop Studio 5, a tech initiative targeting young women. We want them to explore how technology is actually working. They can develop video games out there using these advanced softwares that you see them use in big corporations. There's been a global push in recent years to get more young women to pursue a career in STEM. Here in Qatar, those efforts have been taken up a notch to make sure that more women are being represented in positions of power. Someone who has the power to shape Qatar's policies on sustainability is Dr. Dima Al-Masri. I lead the water project research at Earthna, and uh, what we do now is we work on uh, basically water resource management and achieving water security in Qatar for resilience towards climate change. Dr. Dima's passion ignited from an early age, inspired by the story of Erin Brockovich. Her determination to turn the tide in water research led her to spending a decade as a scientist at Kiri HBKU, working on the treatment of wastewater. There was a strong need for the country to treat wastewater and reuse it for irrigation, not only irrigation, but other applications as well in the industry, such as for cooling and cooling plants. Dr. Dima acknowledges that the industry needs more women. There were a lot of times where I was the only woman in the room. Even though most of the times I didn't feel like I was the only woman, right now I'm very open to giving help and advice and feedback to any woman that comes to me that's trying to enter that field. And beyond just reading more about STEM, Dr. Dima says bringing it into everyday conversations is a helpful way to make the industry less intimidating. Once you do incorporate STEM topics in your daily conversation, it would open you up to more thoughts and ideas and the STEM field would feel more normal. It's a sentiment Iman agrees with, but also adds another powerful daily habit. Be proud of who you are, where you come from, and what you're doing each and every day of the year. Please celebrate yourself every single day because you are doing amazing. It can be hard to start a business from scratch, but sometimes all you need is a little guidance. And that's what the Doha Women Forum aims to do. Empower women across all sectors to turn their dreams into reality, whether it's to lead a company or sell a product. And every year, the organization dedicates an entire day to hold roundtable discussions, panels, and inspiring talks by women leaders, entrepreneurs, and industry experts. I caught up with Conchita Ponte, the founder of Doha Women Forum, to learn more. 
Panchita, thanks so much for speaking with us today. Firstly, what inspired you to launch Doha Women Forum? What's the goal of this organization and how has it grown since its inception? You know, I've been here in Qatar for uh, a while and I've come across many amazing stories about women and I believe these women deserve a platform to share their stories and inspire others. Doha Women Forum is not just an annual event where you network or you connect with like-minded individuals. It has grown more than that. I've seen you know, women coming out of the forum feeling inspired, motivated, and ready for action, ready for transformation, ready for change. A seed of encouragement, a seed of empowerment has been planted on them. And this seed encourages them to pursue their dreams to find their voice or their calling and make a difference. So the Doha Women Forum will be marking its seventh year this year and every year it keeps getting bigger and bigger. What are you expecting this year? The upcoming seventh edition of the Women Forum in September is anticipated to mark another significant milestone. So this year, we are there are high hopes of attracting international delegates to join forces with the local advocates, further solidifying Qatar's position as a focal point for women's empowerment in the region. One of the main challenges that women all over the world face is at some point in their lives, they, have, they feel like they have to choose between career and family. But what are you and your organization doing to change that mentality? I think this is the beauty of what Doha Women Forum has been doing for several years. Through discussions, we learned of the various initiatives and advocacy efforts of the organizations that are empowering women you know, to pursue both their career goals and family aspirations simultaneously. And this helps us to move forward together to, toward uh, gender equality and um, fairness. The fashion industry isn't necessarily known for its inclusion, but one Qatari-based designer is trying to change that. Gils Manjulaksmi recently hosted a forum celebrating sustainable fashion and disability inclusion. And as Adol Halim found out, the idea is to make fashion fun and accessible for all. Gils Manjulaksmi is on a mission to improve inclusivity in the fashion industry. And she has plenty of support. Samantha Bullock is a London-based inclusion advocate. The challenges are a lot. I think nowadays disabled people are starting to see, to be seen as a consumer. We need to consider that at some point in life, all of us are going to have a disability. So it's something that is almost such like 100% of the population. We need to find easy solutions. One such solution is this leather bag she co-designed with a Brazilian brand. As you can see, we have these loops here. This is something that is quite easy, but you can put this behind of our chair. And if you don't need that in the case, you can just remove the loop and you have. So the solutions are quite simple. We have, this is one of the solutions. We don't have like one fits all because one's ability is completely different than another one. This two day event, sustainable fashion and disability inclusion is the brainchild of Manjulakshmi Bharatan, who's no stranger to breaking barriers. She created her Gil's Manjulakshmi fashion brand 10 years ago and produced shows for Middle Eastern designers at New York Fashion Week, which made her the first designer from Qatar and first brand from India at the prestigious event. In New York Fashion Week, it's very difficult to get selected, especially you have a high competition globally. But there is lots of uh, importance given for anything that you're doing for a community. First of the things is sustainable fashion, that if your company is highly sustainable, it really values in the Fashion Week. And second thing is your contribution. This is the men's line. Gills prides herself on creating luxury, sustainable fashion, as well as modest designs. She says sometimes new ideas don't work right away, but require trial and error to get them right. We first brought an idea, creating men's tobe with linen. It was catchy, but what they said is that tobe is considered to be something that cannot wrinkle. So we had to change the idea. We had to try getting a fabric that looked similar to tobe, but it was 
maybe from recycled materials. So we are working on this project now and uh, soon we will be doing a collaboration with one of the industries here in Qatar. She created this fashion meets sustainability event to provide awareness to designers also about the need for inclusion. Gil's Manju Lakshmi believes events like this will help address gaps in the fashion and design industries. The curator hopes this one will encourage sustainable and socially conscious initiatives to not only include people with disabilities, but also inspire and empower them. Jackie Bowden is inspired. She's trying to introduce sustainable materials to the local exhibitions and events industry. She's been in Qatar for more than 30 years and has seen a change. People are more aware of, you know, what we're doing to the planet. And I think people are looking now for materials that are a substitute for wood and plastic. Her company discovered a material in Germany, which she says is a strong, lightweight and sustainable paperboard. It's processed in Sweden and is 100% recyclable. To me, it's very important about when you're using something, what happens to it after. And at least we know with this, that when you've taken it off, a, uh, off an event, it has another purpose. You can either recycle it, which means that you're not harming the environment. You know, even if you've got small pieces, you can give it to the school kids for them to use for projects. And there's always a, a second use, third use to this without actually just getting it and dumping it in the waste. It's been a pleasure to share these inspiring stories of women in Qatar who are empowering their communities regardless of their profession or physical limitations. We hope you've enjoyed this episode, but that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out yournews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on Qatar 365.